George Kyle has been with CNC Group for 30 years next year, 2022, and is now um, Head of Environmental, Social and uh, Governance, or ESG. Um, he's Strategic Senior Communications Brand Partnership Corporate and Government Affairs Specialist, who's led in the development, successful delivery and communication of brand events and ESG for the CNC business for a number of years. Prior to his current role, George was Head of Sponsorship at InBev UK and Ireland and Head of Sponsorship and PR for CNC Group. George, welcome. Um, before you start your presentation, I would like you to put CNC in context for conference and in particular where Tenants fits in that. Tenants is, is after all one of Scotland's best known brands. Um, CNC Group is headquartered in Dublin with worldwide sales of, of global brands. Um, can you first of all tell us more about the business itself and how Tenants fits into that portfolio? Absolutely, Eric. Yeah, I'd just like to start off by thanking um, Brodies for giving us the opportunity to um, talk through our experience and ESG journey to date and to commend the, the, the earlier speakers. It's, it's hugely refreshing to hear that we see we face similar opportunities and, and challenges as, as we tackle this um, hugely, hugely important topic. Um, CNC, CNC is probably the greatest business that very few people have heard of. We are actually the UK and Ireland's uh, largest vertically integrated premium drinks company. Our brands, trading brands that people may recognise are uh, Matthew Clark and Bibendum Wholesale Businesses, uh, the Bulmers business in Ireland, and obviously the iconic tenants business in, in, in Scotland. In terms of our scale, uh, we are around 3,000 employees. We're about a billion pounds market capitalization in a normal year. I, out with COVID and the pandemic, we, we, we generate about 120 million euros and we service about 35,000 outlets. Uh, tenants, as you say, is the, the iconic business um, based in Scotland. We, we do export to about 60 markets um, across the, the globe. We've been operating at Well Park for 450 years with one of Scotland's oldest businesses. We can trace brewing at the Well Park site back to the 1100s when the monks from um, the cathedral were, were, were making beer. Uh, as a 450 year old business, we talk about sustainability being part of our DNA. Um, the tenants family, when they commenced operations in 1556, had social housing, apprenticeships, medical care, and, and, and um, schooling um, for employees, kids. And we genuinely can, can trace that approach and care for our community um, to right through till today. Uh, Tenants Lager is, is a fabric brand of, 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 of Scotland. Uh, two, in, two out of every three pints that are drunk in, in, in the nation is, is, a, is a pint of Tenants. We've invested in Scotland's cultural, sporting and music uh, infrastructure over a long number of years. Tenants as a business has invested more uh, in the last 20 years into the SMEs that are largely make up our, our hospitality uh, industry in terms of our environmental contribution. In recent weeks, we were awarded at the Scottish Beer Awards, the Sustainable Brewery of the Year. And at the Vibes Awards, we were um, shortlisted for uh, outstanding achievement in our environmental practices. So it, it, it's part of who we are. It's, it's part of, uh, as I say, our, our, our DNA and uh, our commitment to ESG as part of the CNC group is all about us stepping up our efforts across the group to deliver on those ambitions. Um, if we could move on to our, our next slide, uh, I'll give you some context in terms of our approach to ESG. Uh, CNC is, I think it's fair to say, we've, we've been a hugely philanthropic business, but we took in, we're a business that's grown by acquisition. Our business units operated independently. Um, we, we therefore did not have a, a purpose or a northern star to, 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 to guide us. We did lots of great work, but they were not aligned and, and coordinated. I, I, and I genuinely believe that at CNC, we believe 
that an, a, a, an appropriate approach to our community and the environment is because we believe it's the right thing to do. What we don't shy away from, though, is that if we can get good by doing good and deliver commercial benefit at the same time as supporting our um, communities and society, that's something that we shouldn't shy away from. Um, one of the other areas I would, I would comment on that as a business with those disparate activities, we potentially were not as good as we may have been in telling our stories and sharing our success. And only by sharing success can you inspire um, others um, to emulate your efforts and encourage the business as a whole and to step up our, our, our efforts in this area. In terms of the, of, of the context, there is no doubt that everyone has been impacted by the pandemic and societal issues like Black Lives Matter and everybody's expectations have grown as to what we can do as individuals and businesses and nations in terms of contributing positively to our um, environment and to society as a whole. Uh, we are at an early stage of, of this journey. I'll continue to reference it as a, as, as, a, as a journey, but what it also underpins is a new strategic approach from uh, the CNC group and that rather than disparate business units, we are looking to create a one CNC approach um, to how we operate without losing the power of, of our individual brands. This is meant to further enhance the power of our individual brands and a, an ESG approach. Um, establishing a culture across the, the business will be one of the benefits that, that, that we will seek um, as we enhance our ESG efforts. If we can move on to the next slide, as I've highlighted, um, the new one CNC approach requires a purpose, and we and we haven't spoken about a purpose in, in the business in the in the eleven years that that, that I've that the tenants business has, has been part of CNC. As I say, we, we acquired Matthew Clark and Babendum back in twenty eighteen, and only by having a purpose or a northern star to guide us in, in our efforts can we start to establish a. a, a, a a culture and a one CNC approach that will deliver us, us benefits. So as well as a purpose, we, we're looking to articulate and embed our values of respect, joy and, and quality. And this approach um, has given rise to our ESG framework. Um, if you could, could move on to the next slide. Our ESG framework is, is directed by a, a, a vision of delivering to a better world, reflecting our capability as a, as a drinks business who has a, a huge uh, distribution capability. Um, if we are delivering to a better world and stepping up to our commitments under the three pillars of environmental, social and, and, and governance, we will embed a culture and we will engage, inspire and achieve a committed workforce who believe in the power of CNC, as I say, without losing um, the inherent belief in power of our individual brands. If we can pass on to the, the next slide, I'll, I'll take you through some of the initiatives that we have ongoing. I, I don't mean, I will not touch on everything on the pillars. You, you will be glad to, to hear our focus, largely driven by COP26, having just taken place in Glasgow, I'll focus on the environmental pillar and our efforts around reducing our emissions, but also our approach to um, as local sourcing um, and responsible sourcing in, in our supply chain. Uh, again, one thing I would, I would acknowledge in terms of CNC's approach and how seriously we, we, we take this topic. Uh, during the pandemic, we lost 80% of our revenues with the closure of hospitality. The business had to take some very difficult decisions in terms of investment priorities, but one thing that, that didn't change was the investment in our environmental initiatives, every one of which that was slated um, to progress during the period of the pandemic has um, either been delivered or will be delivered in, in a matter of weeks. And, and one of the most major of those was our carbon capture capability um, at, at Well Park. 
uh, that came online in uh, late last year and now captures around 4,000 tonnes of um, CO2 that was previously we had to buy in uh, and would have been discharged into the environment. I'll, I'll keep coming back to this point about getting good by doing good. Again, we benefit commercially through this environmental initiative. Uh, everyone will have read about the shortage of CO2 through the summer, and the measures that we have in, had in place at Clonmel and the measures that were put in place at, at Well Park um, meant that we were self-sufficient in CO2 and we could carbonate our products and get them out into the marketplace at a time when there was a severe shortage. Uh, I, I, again, um, it probably wasn't the investment decision as to why we were doing it. We were doing it from an environmental position, um, but something that, the, the, as I say, delivers commercially will encourage future environmental investment also. If we can move on to the next slide, please. On a, on a similar vein, across our major sites from the 1st of April this year, we are now sourcing all electricity from uh, renewable sources. That saves about 8,000 tonnes of uh, emissions. Uh, I've, I've, I've used the image uh, on screen uh, around rebrewable energy. Again, that is uh, one of the executions of a tenants lager campaign that, that ran during um, and around um, COP26. And, and, and again, the reason why I, I call it out was that this was a refreshment of a campaign that ran back in 2019 when we first spoke about our environmental initiatives and conducting some research following um, the, the campaign that ran in October, November 2019. We saw the highest brand scores for Tenants Lager that we'd seen in a number of years. 51% of uh, tenants rejectors um, said that they, they were in they valued the campaign, and I think it was a figure of 19% of those rejectors now said that they would consider a tenant's lager. Again, another example of an environmental investment that is helping build the brand and deliver for us uh, commercially. If we could move on. Again, one of the other major um, environmental initiatives uh, uh, that we've delivered over the last couple of years is the installation commissioning of our anaerobic digestion plant. For those of you, you that don't know, and I certainly didn't know, uh, anaerobic digestion is about treating wastewater before it goes into the water stream at uh, Domarnock. Uh, again, Clonmel has said anaerobic digestion for a number of years. Well Parks was uh, commissioned back in, in, in 2019. It improves the water quality by 90%. But one of the additional benefits is that anaerobic digestion provides 10% uh, of the energy requirements across both sites. Uh, and again, in a time where we're seeing energy prices go through the roof, um, that is delivering commercial benefit to, to, to the business uh, once again. If we could move on. As I'd highlighted, um, CNC, uh, all of our distribution capability is in-house as the UK and Ireland's largest drinks distributor. You can imagine the logistics footprint and the resulting emissions um, that that generates. We have undertaken an exercise over the last couple of years to bring a distribution network in-house and to, to streamline it while improving customer service in Scotland as part of that exercise again during the pandemic. We opened a new depot in Edinburgh, which contributed to this overall reduction of, of 2 million transport miles across the group and a saving of, of 1,200 tonnes. We have an ongoing commitment to ensure that our vehicles are the most efficient and environmentally efficient that, that are out there. We've introduced some solar power um, to our, our 34 of our vehicles within the group which um, reduces fuel consumption by 5% and, and 100 tonnes uh, of, of carbon uh, this, uh, emissions per annum. And like every other distribution business, we are staying very close to the development of technology. The technology is not mature enough to um, transport the heavy loads associated with our deliveries 
um, to both the on and off trade at this stage, um, but we're working with all the experts that we can in this area um, to adopt that technology across our business as soon as is feasible. Um, again, if we could move on. One of the greatest benefits of, of any brand is, is being local and sourcing the finest of local ingredients, both the uh, Bulmer's cider and, and, and tenants, no doubt benefit uh, from uh, employing those practices. Uh, again, within Clonmel, our, our ownership of our own um, orchards and the local sourcing of our apples mean that uh, we are carbon neutral for our own operations at, at Clonmel, which is, which is a, a, an, in, an incredible achievement. In terms of these en enhanced sourcing standards, I have to say that, that our knowledge has, has developed and improved in, in recent years, I'd say in the last couple of years. Like many other businesses, we, we did not necessarily have a good handle on our scope three emissions, the emissions that sit within our value chain. And to give you some idea of the scale, uh, in our scope one and two emissions, our figure is about 40,000 tonnes and that, that's reducing year on year. In our value chain, um, those emissions that, that sit within our customers and our suppliers, we're talking over 700,000 tonnes, almost a factor of 20. We, we're, we're no different from anybody else. Most businesses operate on, on, on those factors, but what we recognise is the only way that we can ultimately tackle our environmental harm is through collaboration with our suppliers and, and, and customers themselves. Uh, having an accurate handle, having good data and measuring the figures accurately to allow us to pledge to be carbon neutral by, by, by 2050 at, at the latest is, is an exercise that we have put um, a huge amount of work into in, in recent years and, and the capability within the business to um, measure those emissions accurately. Again, in terms of giving validity to our numbers and credibility to our numbers, we're working with the Carbon Disclosure Project and the Science-Based Targets Initiative. Um, Again, what we're looking to do in terms of to underpin our numbers, to avoid any claims of, of greenwashing, uh, we want to make sure that we have third party and independent verification of the, of the numbers that we work to. This collaboration with our value chain will be part of a new approach to ethical and sustainable procurement. Uh, not only in identifying where we can minimize our environmental impacts, but making sure in terms of the ethical and societal approaches of our suppliers, they are operating at a level that is appropriate for both them and our business. And that's something that, that we will be taking forward in the, the months ahead. Uh, if we could go to the next slide. Um, again, this is a critical one uh, for, for, for any brand nowadays um, out of plastics. We made a commitment back in 2019 that, that we would be out of plastics by the, the, by the end of 2021. The investment continued again as a figure across both Clonmel and uh, Well Park of, of, of around £10 million. Uh, the image that we've used here was uh, Manny McAllen, uh, the Cabinet Secretary, came in to Well Park on the 6th of October uh, to commission uh, our out of plastics uh, capability. We were joined by Joe Green from SEPA and uh, Shona Munro, who is a recently appointed Manufacturing and Operations Director across the, 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 the CNC group. On that day, we also, and again in this spirit of collaboration, uh, we announced a sustainable growth agreement with um, SEPA with two aims, um, to address our own environmental footprint and those of our, our, across our value chain, but also to use the power of the tenants brand to convey sustainability messages. Um, 
an enhancement uh, and an output of that is that uh, uh, in the last week or so that we've announced that our cans, of which we distribute 1.2 million on average uh, per annum, will, as well as all the responsible drinking messages, will carry a, a please drink sustainably message as well. And in some ways, you, you could suggest that that's a small thing. But if we, if that message appearing on 1.2 million cans, if we can nudge any consumer to change their behaviour and think about recycling when they hadn't previously, um, that is a very, very powerful device. On the, on the same day that uh, uh, we we'll commissioned the, of plastics capability, we also announced our partnership with the 2050 um, Climate uh, Environmental uh, charity to launch a series and host a series of paint and a plan sessions, uh, environmental discussions that would look to turn advocacy into climate action. Uh, we held our first session at uh, Whale Park Brewery um, last Tuesday. Uh, I have to say it was an amazing event, the power of groups of young people um, to look to make a material difference um, and we've scoped out what the schedule of events will be and those will be rolled out across Scotland through the course of 2022. Um, if we can move on to the next slide please. George, um, I wonder can I just come in here because uh, I'm interested to hear what you're going to say on the subject of bees bringing us back to Ian Miller's uh, comments uh, on that part of the market this morning. Um, just to pause for a moment and reflect on some of the, the messages that we've heard. I did like your reference to Northern Star, um, but more importantly, ESG becoming part of the new strategic approach in CNC and critically enhancing your brands. Now, you've managed to nail most of the questions you were going to be asked this morning with your presentation, and, and specifically, one of the, 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 the issues we wanted to address was the relevance or the applicability of what you're saying to delegates, because uh, as you've, you've mentioned some substantial numbers and you've got a substantial budget for, for, for implementation of this strategic approach. But what I'm hearing, I think, are some messages that businesses, small, medium and large, can take on board, uh, whether it's around what you've just been saying on packaging, uh, in raw ingredients, or logistics. This is not this is not um, corporate gloss, if I can put it that way. There's a very real and substantial issue here, which every business can tackle. Uh, absolutely. Um, authenticity. Uh, you know, the, 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 our fabric brands in, in tenants and, and boomers are, are, are loved and have thrived for a reason because because they're authentic. Um, and part of that authenticity is now that, you know, we spoke about good citizenship and um, being a good neighbour in, in, in the past. ESG, and it's in my job title, but, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, I think if, if, if we reference it as sustainability, it is this commitment to get good by, 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 by doing good. Um, we need to embed it. Every business needs to embed it. It, it. it can't be a bit corporate gloss. People, people will see through that. It, it has to be genuine. It has to be authentic. It has to tackle um, issues, not just within the environment. And environment's the, the, the greatest challenge we, we, we probably all face at this moment in time. But being a good citizen, um, focusing on the social pillar and everything being underpinned by good governance practices means that you have you're set up to get good by 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 doing good. So uh, we, I think I referenced earlier on, we, we historically we may not have been, our brands have been brilliant at telling our stories, our brand stories. What we haven't necessarily been good at is shouting about our good works because that's not what you do. We, you know, we're Scottish, we, 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 we don't talk about such, such things. That, that will change. You know, at the CNC, we absolutely recognise we must tell our stories. We must tell our stories to engage all the stakeholders that we need to. Um, and key within that are, are our colleagues across the business. You know, the example we're just about to talk to is uh, this, this bees initiative and a, and a very deliberately 
I pulled it in as part of today's discussion because of Ian's session. We, this, we operate as disparate business units. Colleagues across CNC didn't necessarily see this campaign. And it's phenomenal because it epitomizes everything. I'm using that word again, phenomenal. It epitomizes everything that is good about a genuine and authentic um, sustainable and a sustainability initiative. The, our bees are integral to the success of our, of our ciders. We've had a small scale support of, of bees around the, the, the orchards over, over a number of years. People will say it's the genius of, genius of marketing, the genius of, of communications. There is a recognition of how fundamental bees are to our future, our sustainability. Uh, the, the, the campaign was to use a marketing phrase and forgive me, completely through the line. This appeared on TV, radio, social media, in hospitality and also in a packaging from take home. In its simple terms, it was uh, when the opportunity for one of 500 bee hotels, these bee hotels propagated and contributed to the, to the future of the bees who are integral to our business. Some would say, you know, a bit lighthearted, but 500 bee hotels would make a, will make a phenomenal difference, again, phenomenal, to, to the future of uh, uh, and the sustainability of, of, of bees uh, in, in the island of Ireland. One of the lines, uh, and I could, have, I could have shared, you know, the, the deck is about 20 slides. Uh, the, the, the line is meet the workforce. That, that's how in, integral the bees are to, to our operations. Uh, as I say, as a, as, a, as a truly authentic and successful and, 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 and a campaign that people would, would admire, they would buy into, they would see it making a difference, but it's inherent within what our operations are. And that's ultimately what sustainability has to be about. It has to become part of who we are. It's not a separate function. And George has got ESG in his title and he's going to deliver all the ESG for the business. It has to be a role for every single individual across the business and they know what their role is in delivering on our sustainability objectives. Thanks, George. Well, you've certainly given us a little bit of contrast. We've heard a lot about Scottish bees, and now we've heard about the Irish bees. And I think you've also given us another theme for next year. Claire from FAI Farms was speaking about regeneration. And I'm thinking authenticity is a word we've heard a lot this morning. So on that basis, perhaps that's 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 a theme for another conversation. George, many thanks. Um, I'm going to bring the conference to a close, uh, but first of all, can I say there will be a short uh, Brodie's feedback survey. It'll pop up at the end of this session and it'd be much appreciated if you could take a minute to fill it in. It's not a Zoom uh, survey, it is ours. It's to allow us to shape future uh, events for the sector. Uh, we will be sharing a recording of uh, this morning's conference afterwards, so keep an eye out for related online sharing as of today. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. A big thank you to all of our speakers and have a great day. Thank you all. Bye bye. <laughs>